at the moment I'm having a lot of um, my own issues with my daughter and um, um, I'm not sure exactly how I feel. It's very um, difficult um, because I, I've been trying to let go of what I want for her and how she wants things and how we're different. And she puts it very clearly to me that um, she doesn't want things and when she wants things that I think are not good for her, I have to let that go and let her experience it. But my question is, um, I feel uh, sort of removed and I'm not sure whether I'm shutting down or I'm trying to get used to being not in her life um, or whether I'm just not used to it or I'm not sure if you could help me with that. I feel like you're toughing yourself through it, Lorleen. You're like, I know it's right, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> but you're shutting down lots of emotions in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I feel really sad. And um, um, what, what do you feel sad about, Lorleen? <laughs> Your child's not doing what you want her to do or what you feel is good for her. I, I'm, I'm a bit confused, I think, because... Um, uh, for example, she, I was explaining a situation where I was talking to some of my friends about my reactions to what had happened and I was explaining my own rage and hurt and, and confusion and, and I was not focusing on her doing things not in the right way. I was focusing on me and how I was do, reacting to it. And she asked me, and I, t I always tell her what I do, and she got very upset and she, she, she came to me later and she said, would you just stop talking about me? And, um, and she started crying. She said, can't you see I'm hurting? And I said, but I didn't talk about you. And she said, um, I don't care about all this AJ stuff. People get the wrong impression. Even though you're trying to talk about your stuff, they think I'm a terrible person. And so she, and she virtually got me there. And I had to wait for a while before I answered her to her question, would I not talk about her? And then I, said, if it's of no benefit to anybody, I will not talk about you. And we went through a bit more, but I had then a discussion with my partner, uh, um, a, a chat about something, and it was to do with the possibility of incest, and it was just talking about what I'd been reading and trying to feel into and he started to minimalize it and I said please just listen don't don't comment and shut me down and he went into a rage and then and then I I got into a rage not rage but I was upset and I said we can't talk because I I'm just trying to explain what I'm not even sure about myself and so I got cut down again. And so now I'm in this place where I'm on the process of selling and it, there's a lot of, lot of stops here and stops there. And I feel like I'm really um, boxed in because I can't express whatever's in me because there's a lot going on and I can't, I don't know where to take it because I can't. Yeah. I feel so, like so can we help with the, some, of the, some of that? What, what? What's happening for, in both situations is that when the person is not doing what you want them to do, 
in your daughter's case, you would like to have a much closer relationship with her where she's not as angry with you. That's what you feel. And, and so, so when she doesn't do that, you then feel upset with her, which actually creates more anger in her, to be frank. It actually makes her even more resistive. So there has to be an expectation in you there. So if, if you're not close to your daughter, what's the grief? What do you feel when you're not close to her? So when your daughter's angry with you, what do you feel? Um, well, intellectually I feel several things. One is that it's good she's getting angry. Yeah, that's, that's an that's intellectual, intellectual thought. Yeah, I understand that. Yep. Um, but also that I, I don't know what to do. I just... So you feel confused? Yeah, I feel really confused because I'm... I also feel that I'm, I've been unloving because I've tried to ask her to do things that she doesn't want to do. I'm aware of that. And then I'm also, um, don't want her to hurt herself, but I can't tell her not to do these things. So I, I guess that's why I shut down because I don't want to know about it. If, I think you don't want to feel the feeling that's there when you're stopping yourself from your addiction, which is to tell her, don't hurt yourself, don't do these things, there's a huge feeling that's there, but because it's really scary and it's what's feed, fed the addiction, then you're going to shut down. Can you relate to what I'm saying? So the addiction is what is making me scared. Um, you want her to be safe, right? Yes. That's, that's what you're trying to prevent. And not do the things you safe. did. Yes. yes. That's yeah. a big one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So what all that's happening there is you're avoiding your own feelings about what you did and how you hurt you got from them. And you're, you're using her, the relationship with her, to avoid these things inside of yourself. See, what, what's happening is you're projecting at her, don't do the things I did. Does that make sense? No, and that's I, an expectation. I, She's yes. allowed to do the things you yes. did, just mm -hmm. like you did them, and you're allowed to too. Yeah. They hurt you and you want to avoid the pain of the hurt of those appearing in your daughter. Can you see that that's just wanting to avoid feeling your own pain about the hurt, about them happening to you? Like, can you see your relationship there? Yeah. Yeah. So when, so when you project at your daughter, don't do what I did, you are having an expectation on her. Mm -hmm. And that expectation covers an addiction in you. What's the addiction? You want your daughter to do totally different to what you did. So why would you want that? There's got to be a very strong emotional reason inside of yourself why you want that. And that would be to avoid your own pain about feeling your own stuff that happened about your own life when you chose to do those things. Is that? Yes. I, I was vaguely aware of that, yeah. With your partner, the addiction's a little different. The addiction with your partner is that he must listen to you mm -hmm. and not shut you down. But the truth is your partner is totally allowed to, he's allowed yeah. to be unloving and he's allowed to try to shut you down and he's also allowed to not listen to you. Now, if he had compassion for you, he may feel differently. Like if he had compassion for you, he may want to listen to you. But he's also allowed to not have compassion for you. Yes, I, I hear that now and I, I'm just wondering that their, sh their way of shutting me down is because I'm actually shutting myself down. Is that just a reflection of that? Well, you're allowing other people to shut you down and you're living with other people who are shutting you down. And there's got to be a, a reason why you would choose to live in that environment. Does that make sense to you? So there's got to be an addictive emotion inside of you that causes you to want to live in an environment like that. And part of that emotion must be, yes, that you want to avoid some of these emotions inside. Does that make sense? But there's probably other reasons, and that is what happens every time is your daughter gets angry or your partner gets angry. So what happens when you're with an angry person? I shut down. And that's your addiction. Um. You're, you're addicted to shutting down when somebody gets angry with you. Why would you want to do that? 
Why is that more preferable than another action? What's an alternative action? So my partner gets angry with me, what's an alternative action to me shutting down? One that's loving. Um. Because an alternative action might be I get angry and frustrated with him and shut him down. (laughs) That's an alternative action, but that's not very loving either. So what's an alternative reaction that's actually loving to yourself and to him? Um, uh, Feeling the grief of... <laughs> yeah. And can you see Lorne too? There's also there's also you have the option of removing yourself. Can you see that? And can she, can you see you don't want to remove yourself? You mean physically going somewhere else? Mm. Uh, I'm trying to do that. I want it to go. And my daughter asked me to stay because it was exam period and in the end I didn't need to be there at all. And I felt like I want to go but she asked me to stay. Can you see your addiction in that? What's the addiction in that? A man asks you to stay and you feel like you... Or your daughter asked you to stay, was it? Was your yeah. daughter? The daughter? Your daughter asked you to stay and you feel you had to. Can you see there's an addiction in that? You didn't want to be there, yes? No. Okay. So you're allowed to, in that moment, get up and leave. Can you see that? So there's a reason why you're staying and not getting up and leaving. Okay. What would that be? What do you want from your daughter? I want her to love me. So you need to feel the grief that she doesn't. Now, now, ironically, when you feel that grief, she'll probably love you more than she does now because there's a huge projection at your daughter at the moment. Love me, love me, love me, you know, love me. And the daughter's got a role. She has to love you. She has to, like, and, and you want her to love you and so you compromise your own truth in order to get this love from her. Do, do you see that? And I probably, that's why I shut down because I tried not to project that, but I just shut down. And the truth is when you shut down, you're still projecting it, right? The key is to own the emotion of it. (laughs) Say, all right, I want love from my daughter. What does my daughter's love give me? What do I get out of her love? If she loves me, what, what am I going to feel? What is it that you want to feel? I guess that I, I feel like a good mother then. So what's the addiction? Is to not feel that you're a bad mother. Mm. To feel like you're a good mother. How many of your mothers have a feeling you want to feel like you're a good mother? Okay, so there's quite a lot who can join you in that feeling. Right? How many of your fathers have a feeling you'd want to be a good father? For some reason there's always less than that for some reason. Interesting. But can you see how a lot of times what happens in our own definition of ourselves if we, if we feel like our child is telling us we're a bad parent, we then feel that we must be a bad mother. And on this planet, being a bad mother is a lot worse than being a bad father mm. for some reason. Right? Isn't it interesting how mm-hmm. that's the case? And, uh, and, and so we get this projected at us and, and then many mothers then fall into the trap of having to earn their children's love when in reality our children are allowed to not love us, actually. Uh, they have free will and they're allowed to choose to not love us and they're allowed to choose to not treat us well and they're allowed to choose to tell us that we're a bad parent and everything, even when we've been a good one. Like They can choose to tell us we've been a bad one. And so the truth is that we're often hooked into that emotion. So when you feel like you're a good mum, how do you feel then? Uh, it's a nice feeling. Yeah, because I, I guess that's, that's actually the addiction is that my mum was a terrible mother. Yeah. I didn't want to be like her. Yes. And so every time, every time your daughter tells you you're a terrible mother, what it's doing is reminding you of your grief about how your mother was towards you. Yeah. And still is actually, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's the underlying grief that you need to allow yourself to feel, of course. The addiction, though, always kicks in, you see, 
and that and that's the thing we got to look at is all right I'm addicted to my daughter being feeling I'm a good mother I want my daughter to have a feeling I, whenever I want someone else to have a feeling I'm addicted to that feeling they that I want them to have so so if I, I want them to feel happy then I'm addicted to the feeling of them having happiness and why would I be addicted to that they're allowed to have sadness and we often find this in a relationship too where I might hook in, I want Mary to be happy, I want Mary to be happy all the time. Mary starts crying and I go into a panic, you know. What, what do I do now? I want to make her happy again, you know. Like, And so I'm hooked into her staying happy. Now if I'm hooked into her staying happy, then I've got an addiction. Something inside of me causes me to hook into her happiness and stay. So when she's happy, what do I get? That's what I've got to look at. When she's happy, feeling good, you know, feeling like I'm a great guy and all that stuff, what do I get out of that? <laughs> I get all these lovely feelings, right? And, and, and this is the thing is our addictions are like this. The truth is when we have inside of ourselves a knowledge that we are a good person, we no longer have shame inside of ourselves anymore. We no longer have guilt inside of ourselves anymore. We no longer have sadness about ourselves anymore. The truth is you can be the only person on the planet who thinks good of you and you'll still be happy in that place. And it won't be a fictitious happy place that you've manifested somehow out of your brain. It'll be a true happy place where you'll be in connection with God constantly but completely happy no matter what anybody else thinks of you. So everyone else around you can think you're a mongrel because you tell the truth all the time and they all get triggered and it's terrible, right? And they can all feel that and you won't feel bad about yourself because you're not hooked into the addiction that they've got to feel good about you. So when I want you to feel something, I am actually having an addictive moment in that particular interaction. If I want you to feel happy then I've got an, addic an addiction to you feeling happy. There's something in me that, that helps. If I want you to feel sad, there's something in me that it helps. If I want you to be angry, there's something in me that it helps. If I want you to feel ashamed, there's something in me that that helps. And they're all my addictions. And that's what I've got to look at constantly if I want to progress. You see, my addictions are the things that harm other people. And because of that, they are the hardest things for me to look at. Can you see that? But the most transformational. But I the think. most transformational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we go to Josh and then across 